and welcome to Talk FCB and welcome back here to the channel guys. The Champions League fever just keeps on coming. So of course I am back here to review Ajax against Tottenham, the first leg at their brand new stadium Tottenham in London and it was an absolutely fantastic game and the reason for that is there were so many tactical elements from this game, there were so many different things, different tweaks that happened throughout it. Ajax started brilliantly, the game then dramatically changed in the second half then with Tottenham changing their shape after Vertonghen's injury in the first half, they really changed it around, but Ajax showed all of their strengths tonight, not only in the great football, not only in the fantastic movement, the brilliant passing, the brilliant goals that we've become accustomed to in this season's Champions League, but tonight we also saw a team who can be mature, who are showing that experience now, and certainly they got their win they deserved. They defended well, they saw it out, they leave London tonight with a goal to nil victory, all sealed up by Donny van der Beek. And I just want to start here, guys, by taking you through that opening sort of half an hour or so from Ajax, which was absolutely stunning on the night. That's the reason, really, why I wanted to make this review, because in that first half an hour, I was transfixed watching that match, watching it play out, watching the players out there, these guys out on the field tonight in that opening 30 minutes. It was the best football I have seen, I would say, right throughout the season. They went there to Tottenham. It was a fantastic atmosphere there, packed inside their new stadium, Tottenham, in a big, big game for their massive game game semi-final stage. They're really up for this game and Ajax came. This young team, once again, we've seen it at Real Madrid, we've seen it at Juventus, now they've come to Tottenham and they dominated it. They took that ball, there was no nerves, there was no sense of pressure because a lot of people were saying coming into this game, would Ajax feel the pressure? These kind of players here, Frankie de Jong, young players, Matthias Stilich, would they feel that pressure now? Because in this game, they were almost leaning towards being favourites against Tottenham, but no, there was no sign of that. They came, they saw, they conquered in that 30 minutes. De Jong here dropping in in midfield, Shona with the legs next to him, Ronnie van der Beek of course heavily involved in the goal and also could have been another one, going to talk about that in just a moment, Ziyech was getting involved, Neres down the left hand side, these two at times as well were interchanging and Dusan Tadic doing what he does best there in that role as a false nine, but I just want to show you really what I acted in that first half, which was so so good against Tottenham, because they played with the back three, it was actually here, a back three from Tottenham and it was sort of Davinson Sanchez, Batongan, Alderweireld there in that back three and the problem the problem was, what Ajax like to do is pack that midfield, play on possession, but it's not just possession, they'll break through you, they'll cut through you, yes they'll be patient, but they're passing with a purpose, they're always looking forward, they're always looking to cut through you, and Ajax here just simply dropped off, they had Tadic here who was sort of occupying the three centre backs, but a lot of the time here he was dropping in, and when he did that it was Van der Beek who was happy to go in behind, and they were interchanging, Tottenham there couldn't get close to them, and that three centre backs there for Tottenham didn't really make any effect on the game whatsoever, and all Ajax were doing was dominating the midfield. They were dropping in here, Neres as the pace in behind, they were holding their width, they were stretching the pitch, and like I say, they played that opening 30 minutes like it was a home game. They dominated it, they were strolling around the park, Frankie de Jong was having all the time in the world there in midfield, and they were picking Tottenham apart, and it was no surprise really the goal did come on 15 minutes, and it was a trademark Ajax goal. There was patient build-up, there was good movement, there was intensity in their play, they worked in at the final third, they worked in around the box, it's Ziyech on the edge of the box, with an absolutely stunning ball. It really is. I can't really stress enough how good that pass is into Ronnie van der Beek because it's a brilliant, brilliant ball. There's just about the right amount of pace on it. He fires it into him low and hard. Van der Beek with a brilliant first touch. He stays on side just about and then it's one-on-one. One-on-one -on -one. One -on -one there with Hugo Lloris in a massive moment. Exactly the same sort of situation that he faced against Juventus and it was the same result. He kept his calm, his composure, he eyed him up and he almost waited and waited and waited until Hugo Lloris actually committed himself. He was very, very nearly on the floor when Van der Beek actually took his shot. And you can see in there Van der Beek screaming at the ball to go and beat the goalkeeper. And that's exactly what it did. It went into the bottom left-hand corner. Ajax had that lead. And I have to be honest, even though, yes, Tottenham put a lot of pressure on them. Tottenham certainly changed their approach. We're going to talk a minute about the way they changed their system. But I think overall here, Ajax deserved this performance. They deserved the result. They played brilliantly the opening half. In the second half, they were a different side to them. But still, they kept Tottenham out. They kept their cool. They kept their calm and right now as it stands they're halfway to a Champions League final
And I think when you actually look at Tottenham, look at the way they set up with those three centre-backs, it didn't suit at all. I think Pochettino made a massive, massive mistake. I know that he's, you know, struggling with injuries, with suspensions, but still, going with three centre-backs against Ajax, who don't really play with a fully recognised centre-forward, did seem like a bit of a mistake. And it was almost a blessing in a way when Vertonghen did get injured and he was able to bring a player on in Musa Sissoko, who wasn't 100% fit. But I just want to talk about Jan Vertonghen, who suffered what seemed to be a sort of nose injury, a head injury. There was a lot of blood when he went down. It was a really bad collision. And then I want to talk about it because he actually went off the field. He was clearly being assessed by the Spurs medical team and they actually gave him the go-ahead to come back onto the pitch and actually continue in the game. And I was thinking, and I know a lot of us were, why is he coming back on? Clearly it was a massive collision. You've got to be really careful with concussions, things like that. And clearly they just sent him back on. Even Matteo Lajas was like, are you sure you want to do this? But they did it. And I was really, really surprised they did that because just a few minutes later, of course, he said, look, I can't continue. And he looked really unstable. He came off the field. His legs actually gave way he was sort of flopped out there, may have even fainted as he was leaving the field, and you just think, is this really happening right now? 2019 we're in now, we've got all this technology of course to get the right decisions, but you have to get the basic things right with regard to head injuries. Football has to get this sorted, they've got to get much, much tighter regulations on this, because players cannot take that kind of risk. He should have been taken off immediately to avoid any further injury, and certainly there, I wish all the best to Jan Vertonghen, I know that he's doing okay now, but still, not the risk you want to take, but like I say, Spurs here, what they did was, obviously Vertonghen went off, they didn't then with a play with a back three, they went went with a back two with Alderweireld and Sanchez, Rose and Trippier were the full backs, they were playing very very narrow now Tottenham, Rose and Trippier were certainly getting forward every available opportunity and putting balls into the box to the big man Yorenti up front, it was Ali, Wanyama and then Sissoko who really changed the game I feel in that midfield with his energy, with his legs, with his power, certainly somebody who come on and make a big big impact in that team because he had a presence there, he was stopping Ajax playing, he was closing them down, there was a lot more intensity about Spurs in midfield with Sissoko in it and of course it's one extra man you take a man there out of the defence you put him in the midfield and suddenly Ajax are under a bit more pressure Eriksson here was trying to be central but it didn't really affect the game as much as I wanted him to tonight Christian Eriksson Lucas behind Laurenti again was quite ineffective and Llorente playing up front looking for those long balls and that's all Spurs did in the second half it was Rose it was Trippier whenever they were getting the ball here they were going long to Llorente who was holding it up and because Spurs have that extra man in midfield they were winning those second balls and when they were doing that Ajax were deep in the field they were being penned back and it was very, very difficult for them to get out. But just like I said at the start of the video, guys, Ajax, I feel tonight, did a tremendous job in terms of taking their chance when they got it and then defended their lead. Certainly tonight, we saw a different side of them. We saw a maturity about their play. Matthias Delict at the back alongside Blin led that team absolutely fantastically. I thought Onana was really good tonight. He came for a lot of crosses. He was really commanding as a goalkeeper. That's what you want behind you when you're defenders. You want somebody who's going to come and command their area like Onana did tonight. And I just want to say, really, not only to regard to Ajax, but also with regard to our game, you're not always going to dominate a game from start to finish. Ajax tonight started incredibly. You won't see a better 30 minutes of football than what we saw from then in the first half. But obviously then, the game can change. Things can happen. Different changes, different tweaks can be made. And suddenly, you're not on top anymore. But in this stage of the competition, when you get your chances, you have to take them. They took it in the first half. They could have had another one. Van der Beek could have just squared it to David Neres, which would have been a fantastic goal and a big, big second goal. And even Neres in that second half, of course, had a chance, played in by Tadic, hit it across the goalkeeper, it smacks the post. Ajax was so, so close here to an even bigger lead, but going back to the Ajax Amsterdam Arena, it's a massive, massive occasion. They have a genuine chance now of getting to the Champions League final, but of course, it's still all to play for. Tottenham in the second leg, they're going to have players back, certainly they're going to try and raise their level, but Ajax in front of their own fans, that'll give them massive belief, massive confidence. Now they've got something to hang on to, but of course, now they've got to handle the pressure that comes with that. Usually in their games against Madrid, against Juventus. They've actually been chasing the game away from home in the second leg. It's going to be absolutely fascinating now to see what they're going to do in front of their own fans when they've got something to fall back on and hold on to. I don't think they're going to go for it. They're not going to throw a lot of players forward at home. They're going to play the usual way. They're going to be patient. They're going to try and cut through Tottenham. They're going to have the ball, of course, try and use it in the best way they can. But Tottenham will look to counter-attack. And of course, they will be looking for those away goals if they can get them. And it's going to be a fascinating contest. I personally really, really hope that I can get the job done and reach the final. For me, they massively deserve it. These players deserve massive, massive adulation. They're brilliant players. They really, really are. And tonight, again, you saw a fine example of why they play some of the best football, if not the best football in Europe right now. And so that was just my thoughts there, guys, on the Ajax versus Tottenham game tonight. Of course, a massive, massive semi-final match. The Champions League always brings out the best, doesn't it? These big contests, these big head-to-head -head battles. And of course, come
Coming up tomorrow, we have one of our own. I made this video, of course, just to pass the time. I want the game to come. I want it to come more than anything I've ever wanted before. But of course, what we want as well is the result we need. Barcelona will face Liverpool tomorrow at the Camp Nou. It promises to be an enthralling contest, much like what we saw tonight and some more. Leave your thoughts in the comments down below on tonight's game, guys, and I will see you tomorrow for Barcelona in their quest also to reach the Champions League final. I'll see you then, but until next time, as always, Vesca El Barça.